Right before we jump into this video, if you'd like me to send you this free guide to capturing motion in low light situations, just look for this orange box over on the website, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I will send you that guide for free. Jared Poland Frono's photo. Dot com and it's been one year since the Canon EOS R6 was announced, so how does it hold up? This is my review of the Canon EOS R6 one year later. Now before I jump into the R6, I do want to let you know that I did release an R5 one year later review as well. Something I'd like you to keep in mind is that Canon not only released the R6 and the R5 at the same time, but that it was less than two years after their first real mirrorless camera, the EOS R. And we all know by now that the R was a solid first go, but it wasn't perfect. In fact, it was far from perfect in many ways, but it did allow Canon to dip its toes into the mirrorless waters. I always said and felt that at the time, Canon was the sleeper of the bunch. And with the R5 and the R6, Canon proved my feelings correct. Let's do a quick recap of the specs of the R6. The R6 houses a 20 megapixel full frame sensor. Now this isn't just any sensor. This, to the best of my knowledge, is the same or similar sensor inside the much more expensive flagship Canon 1DX Mark III. The R6 is capable of shooting 12 frames per second with the mechanical shutter and 20 frames per second with the electronic. It includes a Digic X processor, which is the same one found in the R5 and 1DX Mark III. There's built-in sensor stabilization, dual pixel autofocus for stills and video, 4K video recording, two SD card slots, three inch flip out rotatable touchscreen, and more. A good way to look at the R6 is that it's basically a 1DX Mark III in a smaller, lighter, and less expensive mirrorless body. So how does it hold up after a year of use? This camera flat out crushes. I could really end the review right now, but what fun would that be? Now, as a stills camera, it's fantastic. Sure, it's only 20 megapixels, which in this day and age doesn't seem like a lot, but keep in mind, the R6 basically has the guts of a $6,500 camera. Now, there's always going to be trade-offs, but the image quality is great across the board. Whether you shoot at low ISO or push the ISO into the 10,000 range, you're going to get great results. Now, keep in mind, if you're a cropper, you won't be able to toss out as many pixels as you could with the 45 megapixel R5, but you still can make it happen if needed. And if you need or want more megapixels and you can drop an extra 1400 bucks, you can have an R5. When it comes to autofocus, the R6 does not disappoint. The IAF and lock-on tracking, in my opinion, basically matches the AF that you'd find in Sony's. And if you're wondering how it stacks up to the more expensive Canon R5, the AF in both cameras are exactly the same. I was blown away with how well the AF track quarterbacks on the move running through different drills. It's sticky, it's accurate at a distance, and it frees you up to focus on composition and exposure and not moving focusing points. Now, case in point, at the Renaissance Fair, it locked onto the hawk's eye and tracked it perfectly. Whether it was flying horizontally to me or directly at me, it hit just about every single time. As you can tell, I am beyond sold on the autofocus, and after a year and a few firmware updates, it's only gotten better. On the video front, the R6 is capable of shooting 4K UHD up to 60 frames per second, as well as 1080p up to 120 frames per second. It includes amazing dual pixel AF that even lets you utilize IAF. The 4K is oversampled from 5.1K, which gives you super sharp footage. The R5, on the other hand, allows you to shoot up to 8K video, as well as 4K up to 120. Now, its 4K HQ is oversampled from 8K. We are actually recording with a few of the R5s as well as the R6 right now. Hello, R6. How are you? You're the R6. That's right, the R6 is right there. Now I need to mention that the R6 only offers IPB compression versus all I or RAW that the R5 gives you. Now this means you will have a smaller, more compressed file, but most people, they'll never know the difference. The R6 really is a true hybrid camera, great with stills, 
and great with video. So are there drawbacks to the camera? Sure, there's always gonna be some drawbacks with every camera. Now one, as I mentioned earlier, is that the sensor is only 20 megapixels and for some people, that's a deal breaker. Now for me, it's not a deal breaker at all. The R6 delivers fantastic image quality and the ability to shoot at super high ISOs and come away with clean shots. Let me jump in here real quick because I wanna show you Fropac 3 in action on two photos taken with the Canon R6, starting with this one. Let's go to Zoolander. One click, this is what Zoolander gives you, followed by Winnebago. That looks super cool on this photo. I think it works for this guy. Then we've got Prestige Worldwide, which is like a catch-all for everything. And finally, let's go to Capone. Look how good Capone looks on this image. But next, I wanna take you to this shot with the R6, and it's not exactly exposed very well, but let's see what happens when we go to Fropac 1 and hit Skittles. This is what happens when we hit Skittles. Boom, it goes pop but I think it's a little overexposed. I can just pull back just a little bit. Now, if you're looking to speed up your raw workflow or give yourself a great starting point, because don't forget, it's not over with the click of the button. Sometimes you need to do tweaks. We created 15 all new custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash fropack3. While you're over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters. And if you decide to pick them up right now, they are on sale. Or if you wanna get Skittles from Fropack 1, you can pick up the triple play bundle with Fropack 1, 2, and 3 and save even more. Now, let's get back to the video. The EVF of the R6 is a 3.69 million dot OLED display versus the R5's 5.76 million dot one. Now, this isn't a deal breaker either as the EVF is still crystal clear because they probably had to shave some money off somewhere. Now, another downside would be the cost of RF glass. Canon has brought out some amazing RF Pro lenses, but it comes at a price which may be prohibitive for some new shooters. They are working on less expensive options, but even their Pro F4 lenses are fairly expensive. The good news is, if you have quality EF glass already, it will adapt very well with the EF to RF adapter, if you can actually get one, because they're kind of sold out everywhere at the time of recording this. Now, another downside when it comes to lenses is that there are currently no third-party RF lenses from Sigma or Tamron. Whereas with Sony, there's a ton of solid options options both expensive and inexpensive from Tamron and Sigma. Price is also another downside. Now bear with me as I explain this because I think it's worth every penny, but I think it should be at least 200 to $250 less because the closer you can get to that 2K sweet spot, the more I think Canon will sell. But at the end of the day, if you're making money with your gear, the few extra bucks will be made up quickly. It's those people who as of right now, who don't do this for money, that might be scared away at the higher price, even though it's worth every single penny, like I said. Now there are rumors of less expensive, updated full frame R bodies, but we'll have to wait and see what Canon releases. At the end of the day, after being out for a full year, the R6 still holds up and will continue to hold up for years to come. Now, if you're someone who has a lot of Canon EF glass and you've been waiting to go mirrorless, the R6 is a great option. If you're just jumping into photography and can't see spending R5 money, the R6 is a great place to start. Just remember, lenses are one of the most important aspects of photography, and they can be more expensive than the body itself. If you're into nature, wildlife, sports photography, and even portraits, the R6 will get more than the job done. If you wanna do more than photography and get into video, the R6 will be a great choice. Now, personally, I find myself grabbing the R5 over the R6 as I love having more megapixels at this point, but does that mean you shouldn't go with the R6? The answer is no. Not at all. I just so happen to have access to both. Now, here's how I look at it. If you're someone who makes money as a wedding photographer, a portrait shooter, a landscape photographer, or even sports for that matter, you can afford to spend the extra money to take that step up to the R5. But if you're new and you don't have any glass at all, I'd rather see you go with the R6 and take the extra money that you're saving and put it into lenses. Remember, lenses live on far longer than bodies. Invest in good glass no matter what. Canon absolutely knocked it out of the park with the R6. It holds up today and it's going to hold up tomorrow. 
jaredpolinfronosphoto.com. See ya.